my name is Jeff Singer and I was the drummer in Paradise Lost between 2004 and 2008. It's well documented, especially with the book. I'm extremely proud of my time with Paradise Lost. Um, I think we are still good friends and um, really my time in the band goes back 20, was it now 26 years uh, to when I first auditioned. Um, my memories of that time are um, obviously been very excited. It was around the time um, Icon came out and I remember hearing the band and thinking they were specifically something fresh, something very new. Um, so to have the, the opportunity to audition for the band was absolutely huge. I can remember very clearly the day I've done a lot of work on the songs at home and uh, went up to the rehearsal room in Bradford. And um, it's funny, the, the uh, I think it was like being a new kid at school I remember very clearly, I remember meeting Aaron, who was as smiley as ever, and Steve. I remember Greg and Nick was just sat on me, a cab in the back of the rehearsal room, hardly said a word. I thought that was a bit off. <laughs> but um, I think the audition went well. Suddenly I didn't get it, and I remember it being very difficult for me because I was very keen to get the job at the time. Um, so uh, obviously Drop Times came out, and um, what, there was a song once, Solemn. And when I heard it, I thought, I remember that drum part. And what they'd done was they'd recorded the drum part from rehearsal and used it on the album. So anyway, I'll, I'll wait for my royalties. I'll probably be waiting a long time. Um, but uh, moving on, I went on to, to play in several bands and toured very hard. I can remember in 1997, I was touring, supporting Megadeth, and we, we had a, a layover in, I think it was Hanover, and uh, we were invited by the band to go and see the shows on the one second tour. Uh, they took care of us and it was really nice to see them all backstage. And when, um, when I got the, uh, when I heard in 2004 that they were looking for a drummer, I was kind of straight on it and uh, straight in touch with the management. And it was weird within days, um, literally two days or something, I was up in Bradford rehearsing uh, songs for the 10th album. Um, and Reese Fulber was there and they were in pre-production already. But the, the thing I remember very clearly about that was um, that it felt there was no awkwardness at all. It was just straight in there. It was as if we'd never actually been apart, really. It seemed to fit straight in. Um, there was no questions about the drumming. The drumming, it's a bit, always a bit awkward. The songs are all written and you're trying to put your stamp on it, but you're, in, you're so late in the recording process. All you want to do is do a solid job, and I think it turned out really well. Um, we recorded the album, um, I think it was May 2004, um, in Lincolnshire. And then uh, for me, it was a really proud day when it came out, the album came out, and it was like, wow, I had to pinch myself really because I was in Paradise Lost. And we did uh, our first tour 2005, um, which was fantastic again, they were like a home machine. Uh, so it was good to be part of that. And it was great to be out headlining and um, seeing, you know, I think where, where, I, where I was lucky was I had been in bands where we toured and, and done a lot of supporting. So I, I knew the ropes, I knew what it was about, but to be out there headlining in such an iconic band for me was was real, a real honour. We went on to, to tour uh, right through um, and then we recorded a new album in Requiem, which is good for me because it was in it from the start, from the songwriting process. It felt more like I was able to stamp my drumming onto the album. Um, and we toured right through Europe and America, headlining, supporting Nightwish in America and then him in Europe as well. It was a long tour, um, but we were doing great festivals. And that's the thing. I remember feeling very lucky in my time. We did uh, download twice and there was a real resurgence of the band, which was great to see. And the festivals were getting bigger. We did some huge gigs, one being uh, the ill-fated gig in uh, the Ukraine, where we played on uh, the steps of Independence Square. It's about a million people. Um, but that was a pretty difficult show, I remember rightly, because Greg wasn't there and we missed a flight. And I remember um, the only way we could get to the show was to go the show day uh, via Prague. And we had to buy some really expensive tickets to get there. And the way it worked out was all the crew were in first class and all the band were in right in the back of the plane. And I remember Millie turning around with his smoked salmon and his champagne at seven o'clock in the morning like this. All good. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I think we the, the head and tail is have been very lucky to have been a small part of a great band and uh, honoured. Um, you asked me for a, a major memory. I remember being uh, 
with Greg in uh, Helsinki Airport on the way back from a tour, uh, or a gig, and uh, we were sat at the bar, I had a beer, and was, they're all rockers in, in uh, Finland, and Greg had uh, a West Coast Choppers t-shirt on, and I don't think he's ever ridden a motorbike in his life, and this guy come over, he said, uh, could I get you a beer? Yeah, good two beers. So he said, um, he saw Greg's t-shirt, and he said, Greg, he said, uh, do you ride? And Greg looked at me, and he sort of went, uh, yeah, yeah. So the guy went, oh, great. He says, what, what bike have you got? And Greg looked at me again. He said, uh, got a Harley. And the guy said, oh, wow, what sort? And Greg went, Davidson. Yeah, all good. Anyway, I hope you look forward to the uh, Obsidian album coming out. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the road with my band, My Dying Bride, at some point soon. Thank you very much indeed.